Just born in Algiers, and, and uh, because my dad was in, uh, working there, and and my mom from Niger. Very quickly, my mom wanted to go back home uh, in Niger, and my dad drove us uh, across the Sahara when I was six months. Uh, we uh, we lived in uh, in Niger for six years when my dad decided to go back to France where he is from and there he took, uh, took the, the kids with him and uh, I, I started to live in France when I was uh, six. We moved a lot like nomads. Uh, my dad uh, coming from, from, from Africa, uh, he, he just uh, he, he had a good life there and moving to France in, uh, in the 60s. It was harder for him to find work, and he, he ha always had to chase work. That means we moved a lot, pretty much uh, around France, uh, in different towns. Yeah, um, my dad remarried later on. Then we started to having more like a family life with uh, the new partner. Uh, and we moved into one area and one house, like a, a, a family house in, uh, in the Beaujolais. And, and there is, that's maybe the place where I stayed the longest when I was a uh, teenager. From coming from Africa to moving to France, uh, at this age, uh, I had uh, some problem to integrate, I guess, uh, la the, this new life. And uh, very quickly, I just uh, closed myself. Uh, and, and, and for that, my, my dad thought fencing could uh, help me coming out of the shell. And, um, and I think he did. Uh, yeah, um, fencing and, and uh, other people helped me to come out of the shell. My, my uncle um, uh, was a fencer in Lyon at the Masque de Fer, a very well-known uh, club in, in Lyon and in France. Uh, and uh, that's why my, my dad knew about fencing. I've I got memories of, about my first days uh, in the club, in this small club in country town club and uh, going to this club um, my first master was uh, Maître Alimoz and um, a typical master with a very big belly. Well it was a very old building and, and he had all the history in the smell of a fencing hall. We, where people were leaving their, their fencing gear in the locker uh, after sweating for the next week. That's me. It was very, uh, not, not a pleasant place. Fairly small. No, not much kind of even the room, like we, we could not put like a fencing piece in, in this hall. It was really a training. A facility and uh, yeah in the end of uh, the club uh, if I remember they were trying to hold the building up like you know because it was falling apart when I spent probably two months just learning to walk uh, step step forward step back balestra and all this and after when you you got the the walking set, you have to start to work with the blade as you walk as well. That means it was so slow. Uh, and I was, I was uh, 15 already, and I was kind of sporty, lack sport, want to move and do. And there I was like totally hold back just to learn the basic of uh, walking, stepping back and forth and after learning the skill of the blades before I, I could have a, a bouting and all my uh, other colleagues uh, they, they were younger than me 
most of them, uh, and they were all having baths and you know, uh, having fun. And I was there, I could not uh, even have a go. Uh, it, it really seems to be for, forever. Um, using, using fencing to, to help uh, the kids with problem or like being shy, to come out of the shell, uh, works and, and been used a lot in, as a pedagogy in, uh, in school and that maybe that's why fencing has been um, still uh, a, a popular sport in, in Europe because uh, it's got this benefit of, of uh, teaching discipline and, and uh, and, and uh, self-confidence. The fact of um, uh, you, uh, you perform beyond a mask is for me the, probably the, the biggest reason. It's not much all the activity you do beyond a mask. And, and this will uh, uh, take out your, your identity by, by, uh, by hiding kind of hiding behind a mask and there you can express yourself uh, more freely and it's like this in, in fencing like in theater when it's as soon as you put a mask on you can really do the pant pantomime 